Welcome to the Cables to Clouds podcast. Cloud adoption is on the rise and many network infrastructure professionals are being asked to adopt a hybrid approach. As individuals who have already started this journey, we would like to empower those professionals with the tools and the knowledge to bridge the gap. Hello, and welcome back to the Cables to Clouds podcast. My name is Alex Perkins. I'm at Bumps in the Wire on Twitter, and I'll be your host for today's episode. Joining me are my two co-hosts, Tim McConaughey at Juan Golbez and Chris Miles at BGP Maine. Chris, what have you been up to lately? Hey, man. Uh, not doing too bad today. Uh, I've been up for a while now. It's almost 11 a.m., but I've been up since 5.30 because we had a call earlier today about some exciting <laughs> content coming for the podcast. So uh, it was worth it to wake up that early. But, um, yeah, feeling good. I just finished what is, I think, my favorite um, Australian snack, um, which is the barbecue shapes. Uh, I'm sure there will be many listeners who uh, have never had this and uh, have never even heard of it. Uh, but I've, I've killed probably like 30 boxes of these, dude. They're so good. It's just like a cracker with like, yeah, what are, it's like a cracker. On it. Yeah. It's like a, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, also, the name is very stupid shapes, like <laughs> barbecue <laughs> shapes. Yeah. I love it. Um, but uh yeah, the, it's, it's I'm going on record saying it's the the best Australian snack. Do they have a Vegemite flavor? Uh, the, actually, they do. They they do. Of have course, a, they do. A, a cheesy a cheesy Vegemite flavor. Yeah, I haven't had that one. It's not cheesy vegan, Vegemite. Okay. But um, <laughs> my girlfriend tells me it is it is good. So I, you know what? I'll send you. I'll send you guys some. I'll send you a box. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I really need something to fill my trash can, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Rude. Wow. Wow. All right, Tim. Tim, how have you been lately? What have you been up to? Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm, uh, I'm studying. Uh, I have been for a while now, but I'm studying uh, Japanese, uh, the language, and uh, I am very bad at it still. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I will ever be better at it, uh, but I am working with an amazing tutor. She's a very nice lady, lives in Nagasaki, and she's very, very patient with me, which is probably the most important thing that anyone teaching me anything has to be. Um, I'm having fun with it. It's it's good. Um, she's a good tutor, and I'm, I'm learning a lot. But man, I tell you, it's one of those things where the more you learn about something, the more you, re you realize like how far back you are on the on the path. Um, so anyway, a little discouraging but tonight, but that's, you got to come get back at it. Nice. I, um, I think, I don't think I've talked about this since it happened. It was like two weeks ago now, but, um, I had my trip to the coast, Outer Banks, North Carolina. Uh, I went to a star party. So it's pretty awesome. It, <laughs> unfortunately it rained the entire Saturday to the point where we were on a house that was on pylons the entire night was just spent with the whole house, like blowing back and forth, like crazy, man. It was, oh, man. it was nuts. Big, big storm, big, big storm. <laughs> that sounds scary, right? Like you're, it's not your yeah. house. You're not used to what it should feel like. And it's all yeah. swaying back and forth. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was nuts. I had never been on a, a house like that, right? Like it's, you have to walk up the stairs just to get into the house. And then, I mean, they, they make it like that on purpose though for the storms. So. But it, it was cool. It was a fun time. And then now my kids are sick again, just like they are, it seems, at least once or twice a month ever since we've moved here. So, Man. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. All right. Um, so today we're going to talk about something, uh, a little roundtable discussion about something that we've noticed uh, happening more and more. And that is tech scams. Um, we keep seeing these popping up everywhere. People getting burnt by them. Um, you know, COVID brought in a lot more, it seems like. Uh, so we just wanted to have a discussion about the types of things we've seen, what to look for, you know, what, what to avoid, what, what good things are actually out there. Uh, and, and just all the different aspects of, 
of these these scams that seem to be showing up everywhere. Yeah. More more and more for sure uh since uh like you said since covid started and um uh, I mean they existed before then, right? Like anybody who's been in tech for any period of time knows how long they've been around. Um but yeah, man, covid when when covid happened and we started uh getting more people come into tech, like I think it's almost like, you know, sharks circling circling the fish new fish in the water or something, man. It definitely happened. Yeah, for sure. And it, it used to be just like dumps all the time, right? Like that was the big thing was everyone was talking about all these dump sites everywhere and how they're just, they're just all over the place. People getting caught everywhere. And then it's like, yeah, COVID happened. Everyone was at home. Everyone was working, you know, had the chance to a lot of extra time stuck in front of their computers. So, you know, time to study and skill up on things. And that's where they really started coming up and showing up everywhere. Yeah. Change, change careers, right? Like for the people that were in careers that were kind of like killed by COVID, for example, they were you know stuck at yeah. home and that was the chance, right? Yeah. Especially like, uh, like service industries, right? Like a lot of restaurant workers, people like that. I know a lot, a lot of people from those kinds of in- industries. Yeah, absolutely. I remember, I remember when the pandemic hit, um, it obviously it, it you know uh, took quite a quite a high tick after that. The because uh, I've been remote for probably the last like five or six years plus something like that, and so like it was very it was very common for people to start hitting me up and like be like, hey, so you you know you work remote? How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you how do you get one of these jobs? How do you you know make sure that you have that type of uh, that type of uh, balance. Um, I mean, during the pandemic, it was all from home, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a, you know, a balance. It actually became, uh, quite harder to maintain that, uh, work-life balance because everything was at home. But, um, yeah, definitely saw that. And then, then you start seeing these, uh, these tech training opportunities, you know, there was, you know, there was, there was money to be made and it's obvious that, that people were privy to that, right. That, that, you know, I hear about it all the time now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I remember getting hit up on LinkedIn by so many people that were making transitions and, Hey, how do I, what, what's my first cert that I should, you know, start going for? And how do I get a job? How do I get a remote job? Cause that was, that was it too, right? For me, uh, I didn't start, I wasn't remote until the pandemic and I have been ever since. Um, uh, but this was really my first foray into, remote work was sh- very shortly after all the lockdowns started. I had a, I had a neighbor, um, who moved in right before COVID, I think. And, uh, or maybe it was right after, but I remember talking to him at one point and he was not in tech at all. And he had his, his old message was basically like exactly what you guys were saying. He was like, man, I was stuck at home and it was like the perfect time for me to pick up, pick up something new. So he actually ended up becoming a a sales engineer, I think for a, uh, like a, a medical startup of some kind, like medical document startup or something. But like, he was like the poster child for this conversation, which is, you know, he was locked down. He was in a, uh, he was in a, uh, a job that didn't, you know, really do remote work, but he had all this time on his hands. So he was able to just like completely apply himself and do that so but uh, but i mean i guess that's the point we're all trying to make is that there were a lot of people with a lot of you know sudden free time on their hands and honestly probably a little scared that what they were doing was was either going away or just wasn't going to be available in a while so they were you know they almost hit like the the trifecta of you know people in uh you know, in trouble, you know, their, their jobs at, at risk, they're, you know, they're worried about making rent. They're worried about, uh, you know, having a a skill that's going to be useful, you know, in this new world. And man, it was like blood in the water, right. For a lot of this, I'm not saying everybody out there saying, Hey, I can help you with tech or we can get you into tech was, was bad, but the, the water was just full of blood, you know, of that. There was a lot of that happening. Yeah. I mean, it was the perfect storm, like you're saying. I mean, it was, like you said, there are plenty of people who, yeah, I mean, of course they made some money on it. Like, um, I don't know, some, 
YouTube, like I'm sure there are people on YouTube or other course creators that suddenly pumped out a bunch of extra content, but it's legit. Like they were actually out there to try to help people. It's just that, like you said, uh, people are desperate. They need money, right? If, if they either got completely laid off and had no income and they needed something quickly. So of course, uh, these scammers are going to try to sell. Oh, in 90 days Quick. you can, yeah, in 90 days you can get a, a six figure job. Right. Of course, that sounds appealing to someone who's desperate like that. And we're seeing that. I mean, even now it's slowed down a lot. I don't know if you guys still I mean, I still see it, but I don't see it near as the as much. But even now, we're still seeing a lot of that kind of six months to six figure stuff. But I I, I don't know if you guys agree or not. Uh, you know, Chris, you can chime in as well but uh i don't see it as much but i still so i'm not speaking of something that's just just now happening i don't think any of us are but it's still out there but i do think it has slowed down a little bit but it's still it's just kind of gone underground and become a little bit more insidious i think yeah definitely i think um you know kind of to the point you guys made before like not not all of it is predatorial right it's not going after a quick buck and and not putting out, um, you know, things that actually help people. There are, there are people that are doing, uh, great things and, and, and have hopefully pivoted maybe their career to make, you know, maybe they want to be a content provider. Maybe they want to do that to help people. And that was a perfect opportunity, you know, based on the experience that they've had. Um, but yeah, to Tim's point, it's, I, I am seeing less of it, but there's still, there's still definitely enough of it to be concerned. Um, uh, like, like Alex pointed out, a lot of these fixed outcome promises that are just like, you know, very red flag to me, um, probably to you guys as well. Just anyone that's been in the industry for a while, um, we're just like, how, how can you promise that? Um, and, and that's, I think that's kind of what we want to dive into is, is how to spot these things and kind of how to protect yourself. Uh, it's, it's not even unique to cloud, but I think it is, um, it's, 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 you see it, for cloud, you see it though, enough too, for yeah. cloud that, that, you know, I, th I think, I think it needs to be said. So that's kind of the, uh, uh, the purpose of the topic today. Yeah. Yeah. I think any, any industry that suddenly like you, you see all those reports all the time that are like, Oh, there's a shortage in this industry of, you know, 500,000 jobs. <laughs> Suddenly, a couple of days later, you're going to start seeing all kinds of people coming out trying to say how you can do it quickly. Right. And yep. yeah. And again, I mean, tech is more vulnerable than most, I guess, because at uh, entry level is so easy to get into. Not, not so easy, but entry level is much more accessible in uh, the tech field than it right. is in a lot of others. So I think, so I think that's a little huge easier part to get of the started. Job. Yeah, a little bit easier to do a Google search and maybe get started than than some fields, certainly. Yeah, so um, let's talk about um, some of the different kind of kind of grifts that that we see out there. Uh, Tim, you, you got any that you want to start us off with? Um, so I mean, there's so many out there, and a lot of them follow the same the same, I guess, cookie cutter recipe. Right. Um, and, and, you know, some of them are so obvious and some of them are, are not right. So, so I guess we just start off with ones that I think we can all agree. Don't even, you know, they're just, they scream grift right off the bat. Right. So this is kind of what we were kind of alluding to before where you see the, um, you see it on Twitter or you see it on, you know, like I said, a Google search or, or something right there. There are these ideas that, you know, you're going to take, 90 days or, you know, six months or three months or whatever, some, some, something, something time bound, but it's always quick, right? It's never going to be three years from now, you'll be an awesome engineer, right? It's always get started now and, you know, get your six figure job in X days. And so, you know, the kind of the implied promise that you're given, the, the, you know, the idea is that you'll give, you'll do this program, right? Whatever that program is, and then there will be an outcome and it will be bound to some small amount of time. I think that's like the number one red flag would be any one of those three things, right? It's time bound. There's an implied outcome that you're almost promised. And, you know, and of course, if it, if it looks too good to be true, it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agreed on, on all of those, the time bound things are crazy. Cause I mean, 
how everybody's different, right? I mean, right. just look at like CCNA studies. I think even even Cisco says it's like we we range from three to six months as a normal study period, right? That's just a simple example, but uh, no one's the same. And some of these people probably are working other jobs too and doing it part-time. It's like, how, how can you say six months if someone's doing it part-time and someone's doing it full-time? Right? There's, there's just no way to put a, a timeline on it. Or they'll do something completely unrealistic where they'll be like, you can do this in 90 days if you do it for 10 hours a day. You know, like something like that. Right. Like that's how they are trying to reach those completely unrealistic goals is they're selling it as, you know, we're giving you all the tools and it's up to you to knuckle down and actually get it done. Right. Like which which puts way too much on the people themselves who are already in a desperate situation. And then and then we get to. And then what they're doing basically is they're is they're shirking accountability by saying, well, if you don't, if you don't do this, this is your fault. You failed to you you suck and you failed to you know produce and you failed to put the time in and put your nose to the grindstone, right? So that's how they kind of get around the responsibility of it for it as well. Yeah, like we we gave you all the materials that this other person was able to you know consume in thirty days and and they passed it. They you know they got this job whatever, but you didn't do it so. You know, there you can't. It's on yeah, you. right. It's it's not. It's 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 not it's not a proper correlation to draw. <laughs> yeah, and that's terrible because I mean, you know, there's so much talk already in our industry about imposter syndrome, and I mean, how to starting your career with straight up imposter syndrome immediately is just that's that's just terrible you're just adding so much more onto something that's already going to happen anyway to probably 99 percent of us right so just piling onto that is is terrible well actually that's really good because um the imposter syndrome piece and and the whole the so we we kind of skipped over this a little bit but i want to i want to circle back to it because it's something we had to had to think about um which is that you know tech is is a harder tech in general right i say tech in general i mean this is a cloud focused networking focused podcast but i think this particular statement applies uh, broadly um but tech is is a little bit more vulnerable to this kind of 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 messaging because you know outside of like certifications or, or, or specialized tests or whatever you know anybody basically should be able to in theory pick up tech and run with it right like it's not like a it's not like a lawyer or a doctor where you have to go to school for so many years and you have to do a residency and all of this and this is of course also why we we see such boot scam uh, boot camps and scam type type you know oh if you just put your your effort in you you can do it right is this idea because there's not this highly regulated and accredited accredited system in place, like some of the other high paying fields, like law and medicine, for example. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. I mean, you know, there is, there is plenty of that in tech, like a lot of what you put in is what you get out, but not to the point where, <laughs> yeah, like, like you guys have been saying, here's all the material, just all you got to do is study for just 10 hours a day. That's it. You know, and you'll and you'll get there in, in a month and you'll have all these certifications and make six figures. And, <laughs> and it's funny because it's, it's not even yeah. unique to just the technical positions either, because there's plenty of like, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've gotten these as well. Like you'll get some random connection request on LinkedIn from someone, a training specialist that uh, for some reason, they're always in India for me. They're uh, and they'll send you a, you know, a, a message out of the blue and it's like, hey, I'm um I'm running this training certificate. It's always the exact same wording as well. Like, so, you know, it's a scam, but it's like, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, running a training for, you know, scrum master and uh PMP certification or something like that. So even the non-technical jobs are, are getting this kind of treatment as well. Um, it's probably um, not, a, not, not as much associated with an outcome, like a, like a compensation and things like that, but it's, yeah, it's, it's like tech as a whole. It's not just, you know, the, the engineering piece of it as well. Yeah. yeah I've seen a lot of that. 
the the PM like the what I've seen the shift from tech focus. Like you said, Alex earlier, like hey, you, it started out with like hey, dump this test and you get your CCNA or whatever, and you'll get you'll be on your way to your your first networking job. Uh, I've seen a lot of exactly what you're saying, Chris. Where you know we're we're leaving almost like leaving the the engineering stuff behind. Like screw that, we're just gonna like work on you know other types of 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 programs scrum master or pmp or or whatever i mean it was just was it just a few uh, just a, a couple weeks ago it wasn't this big scam on or big thing on twitter about a somebody who was like doctoring pmp certifications <laughs> you know like hey just some of your some of your your name and 500 bucks and we'll just like doctor up and and produce a pmp certification for you or something i think i mean that's a lot of those like i can see those being much more on the predatorial side, I feel like that because th those I know. So I know a lot of people who have transitioned out of like the service industry um, and moved over to like project management and things like that. Um, and th that seemed like that was the easiest transition for them. And some of them are absolute rock stars, man, because like you in the service industry, you know how to talk to people, you know how to organize people and you know how to get shit done for lack of a better way. And, and they can really do well at that. Um, but yeah, you're probably seeing people, you know, understanding that when the pandemic hit, you know, a lot of people decided they wanted to move out of the service industry because, you know, the tech companies are definitely making all the money. They're giving the best salaries. Um, and, you know, so it just makes sense that people want to transition into tech and maybe they aren't going to be the engineer. Maybe they're not going to be the the, te the technical person that knows the nuts and bolts, but they they know how to organize people. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 funny to see that happening as well. It's 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 not just engineering. Yeah, multiple points here uh, from each of you. So certs. And I'm not trying to start a holy war here, but, but, um, you know, as certs debatably have less value in our field, it's shifted away, right? Like it's not, we're not seeing so much of the dump stuff anymore for like networking engineering, right? Like yeah. you are seeing it in cloud, right? All like the AWS certs oh, or yeah. Azure certs or anything like that. Um, and then PMP, right? Because now it's, it's, it's transitioning to where the market needs it most it's i guess focusing, yeah. yeah it's it's just kind of funny that that's how it how it moves like that this scam companies are smart enough to follow industry trends and and move around with you're it trying to, you're you trying know, to so tell me my weird. cca is worthless now Alex? is that what you're oh boy here <laughs> no, we go no 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 definitely not <laughs> no but yeah you said like you I mean, see I'm, that like the, the i don't know if it's just more so in cloud than than it was uh, elsewhere, but it seems like people are taking the um, the like Pokemon <laughs> like gotta catch them all mentality oh my God, to yes. the, the cloud certifications. You just see like people with like decked out walls, man, just like not a, not an inch of white space on there, and it's just certification after certification. Which is I'm not saying it's bad, like, but like yeah, it's in. crazy. Uh, I, like I don't I don't remember seeing that as much. Yeah. It's yeah, nuts. I don't know. Maybe maybe when Cisco had all the specialties and stuff, but yeah, the amount of like <laughs> people who have like rows, right? I've seen like pictures on LinkedIn. It's like AWS. Oh here's God. all my list of certs here, Azure, and it just goes through the whole list. It's like, what? Why are they like? I got twenty certs in one year. <laughs> For yeah, what? what are you doing like, with what? that? Like, yeah. exactly. What do you? What is your plan now that you've got the, all those certifications? Was that to get a job? Was that to perform a, the job? Because I want to know what job it is that requires you have twenty different, like, to know everything there is to know about AWS or Azure or something to do the job you were hired to do. That was me. I would be like, yeah, I got twenty certs in one year, and I forgot fourteen of them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. There's not enough time for the mortar to dry on the first cert before right. you're on to the next one. Now, don't get me wrong. When I did a WGU, there was a few that I did that. But there, if I'm being honest, there were certs that I needed for the degree and I had no intention of holding on to afterward. Like, um, 
like uh was it the itil v4 like i raced through that one as fast as i could you know uh, and i'm sorry my apologize apologies to anyone who loves their itil v4 uh i fucking hated it it was <laughs> i hated that certification i hated that test i'm glad i don't remember half of it right so so if you're sprinting through ones that you have to get for another purpose cool but if you you know in theory none of the I'm trying to think like what job it, or what what purpose you could have to stack up like 28 ABS certs or something. Uh, you know, what job that is that you're looking for, unless you're literally want to work at it, unless you're working at AWS yeah. and, and covering everything. But yeah, to your point, like if, if you're gaining it for the uh, uh, like because you want a job doing that specific thing or something around that specific, uh, specific thing, then that makes sense. But, you know, if you're just doing it to check the box, you know, maybe you work at a VAR, maybe they're like, oh, we need to have so many people hold this certification. So, you know, sometimes you're just doing it to do it and it's part of your job. And like you don't, but like, that's not your, that's not your selling factor. Right. Uh, but like, I see people like their tagline on LinkedIn is like, you know, t- 10 times AWS certified six times Google certified, things like that. So, <laughs> so it's true. like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying people shouldn't do it. It's just like, I don't know how that applies directly to uh, compensation and uh, and hiring. I, I don't know what the correlation is there. Yeah, the hiring maybe, right? Because some of these companies are just searching keywords and they just want to make sure people have certain certs and that's all they search for in re- resumes, applications. That's a great point. Social um, media is very much a skill. I don't think they're searching for that many of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's actually getting back, getting back to the topic though. That's another thing to look out. You know, if you've got us, if you see a, a tech boot camp or something like that, and they're like, you know, you're going to come out of our tech boot camp with three high power certs that would normally take you, six months each to study for that's probably a pretty big red flag that you're going to go in there and they're just going to be like handing you the answers you know and that's how useful would that assert actually be you know if you were called to use any of that knowledge so right. you know that's another red flag to look for yeah unless i mean continuing on this trend of the the red flag so uh how about funding options <laughs> right because oh, there's man. so many that you see here with boot camps um it, you guys want to chime in on this? Like, I know there's, uh, you know, def- deferred, uh, like, take it out of your salary when you get a job. There's all kinds of different things here. Uh, yeah. I mean, I get the... So so here's the thing. I'm, I'm of... I won't say I'm necessarily of two minds about it, but, like, I understand the point. If, at least on paper, right? On paper, the idea is that... Here's a person, they're desperate, they need to get a job, you know, they need to, basically they're the ICP, the ideal customer profile of a tech boot scam, a boot camp scam or something like this, where, you know, they don't have a ton of money, they're trying to make things better for themselves and in, 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 in quickly, right, to get that job, to get that money. And so, you know, in, in true classic fashion, we're going to offer them you know, a loan shark type of deal, you know, almost like a loan shark type of deal, right? Like a payday loan type of, of, of setup, right? Like to me, that's a big red flag is if the thing you're trying to do has these incredibly creative funding options, like, like that, like you're saying, like the, you know, the deferred payment or deferred interest, or, you know, you'll pay us X number of your salary when you get a job. Um, it, yeah, I don't know. It's a, I, I, I see the point, but I do, it just doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? It, to me, it doesn't feel right. And it feels like they're doing anything they can to get your money, basically, like even, you know, up front. Yeah. And there's, I mean, I imagine with that kind of stuff, there's probably so much fine print. Like, are you going to read through all that? Because, man, like X, X percent of your salary up up to what point? Right. Like that sounds there's just so many things to think about in some kind of contract like that. That's terrifying. Like you said, it, it makes you think of Loan Shark. And I'm sure there are legit companies that use that model. And it's it's like it's not bad for her for the other party, but it's just it doesn't come off as. Is something that's valuable for them. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be potentially like when you get a credit card when you're 18 years old, right? Like it's like <laughs> you just yeah. you don't understand the repercussions until uh, until they've you know come to uh, come to ask for payment. But like it's, um, I lost my train of thought. 
Um, <laughs> uh, well, I, I would say that it's not always a red flag if they have something creative. Because I mean, let's let's be honest. At some point, someone is going to come up with something new that works. Um, it's not going to be just you know a, com- a complete transactional thing. So I, I wouldn't say a creative. Uh, funding option is an immediate red flag and immediately turn away. I think it's more, you know, just be more like a yellow flag. Just be weary. Um, make sure you look into it. Make, make sure you read the fine print as fucking boring as it's going to be. Make sure that you are advocating for yourself and make sure you're not, you know, getting yourself into a hole. You're not, um, you're not, you know, buying a lemon, so to speak. Right. Um, so just, it just, you know, make sure you protect yourself, but you know, that's the, they're worded in these ways to sound yeah, just creative. Do, do diligence. Yeah, exactly. The other, the, the, the main reason to me why I think creative funding tends to be skeevy is that because you can get creative with the funding, you'll find that the, uh, the actual price tends to go up. Like, Hey, what do you care? It's, it's like you said with the cl- the credit card thing, right? Like, you know, they, they given a kid fresh out of high school, a, you know, $5,000 limit on a credit card. They have no idea what they're getting into. Um, you know, when you see the creative funding options, it tends to be, you know, that, oh, well, you know, we're getting we're allowing you to creatively fund this because and you, you shouldn't care how much we're funding, because, you know, when you get your job, you're going to be making six figures. You'll be able to pay it back in a month or something. Right. And so, you know, a place that's charging you twenty thousand dollars to essentially get you your CCNA is still an absolute fucking joke, right? Like it's an absolute scam. Yeah, that is a good point. It's no matter how creatively funded they do it, right? Yeah, that is a good point. Well, they, some of them will be creative, but they're also like very short sighted, I feel like. And it's, you know, they, they only really make you plan out for like the next couple of years. But you know, if you know, you know, you never know how the market's going to be. You never know how life's going to, life's going to happen. Right. So you need to be prepared. You need to, um, have some protection for, uh, you know, the long term. So yeah, that's a good point. All right. And then, um, so another point, and this kind of combines like two points, um, uh, but they, they go together. Right. So a lot of this, the curriculum, right. Uh, this is something to look into a lot because if you can see what the curriculum is, yeah. And then like Tim mentioned earlier, you can Google a lot of this and you'll probably find a lot of free material. I think to me, that's a huge thing that, that you want to look out for. If, if you Google all the topics that they present to you and you're seeing hits everywhere and there's a lot of free, easily accessible material, I think that's a huge red flag. It's just repackaged someone else's material. And people can build their own interpretation of the material and it have value. Right. Um, so, but I agree completely that, you know, if, for example, the, using my example, you know, $20,000 for a CCNA, like most people that know what a CCNA is and what it takes to get one would be like anybody who, who, who would pay that must have brain worms. Right. But, but the people getting into it, they don't know, right? They don't know what it takes to get it. They don't know the value that it has. They don't know that Cisco will practically hand you everything you need to get a CCNA, you know, minus the, the test fee, you know, (laughs) which is, which is, I don't know what it is now. What is it? Is it 200 now? I actually don't know. Right. Like, but when I took it, it was like a hundred, maybe a hundred, 150. I don't remember so many years now. I think, um, I think it's 300 now, but I'm not, I'm not positive. Even for the CCNA, you might be, you might yeah, be right. Even so. for the CCNA. But, but the point is it's not 20,000 freaking dollars. Right. And, and so it's absolutely nuts. And anyone who's going to interpret the CCNA training and build their own curriculum and course, you know, I would argue that I don't, I don't care how gold plated you did it. It's still not going to be worth $20,000 for your CCNA. Right. Like, so there's, there's obviously lines to be drawn in the sand somewhere in there. And so that certainly the curriculum vitae is a, is a good place to start. How much of this can I find without paying for it? And how, what quality is that material versus the money that they're asking me to lay down for essentially the same shit. Yeah. And I think that's also where things like samples are really good, right? Like um, we were talking about this a little earlier, but like Adrian Cantrell stuff, um, 
it's all listed there. You don't even have to buy it, right? You can literally go on the site, like expand the list of video courses, see the title of every single video that you would be getting. And I think he does previews too, right? Like you can actually watch like a video. Like or two. A couple ones. Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. So just doing that and getting a feel for what the rest are going to look like, right? That's a, that's a huge advantage too. That's, that's an awesome sign of something that's probably more legit. If we're if we're trying to th- talk about like you know re- good good signs or or signs of like you know hey here's this one's a legit one uh, you know versus a, a scam I would say a really good sign is if the person delivering either the material who created the materials delivering the boot camp course whatever it is is like an actual authority in the field in what they're doing right like that's that's an obvious big old green checkered flag you know not not that those people couldn't still scam someone but i mean if you're a a noted authority in your field and you have a community of people that you know believe in what you do and believe you as a person that goes a lot further than someone who comes out of nowhere basically saying you know i'm making six figures and i'm driving these cars and i'm you know doing all of this stuff and you can too if you follow me and do my course like you know and this one seems so obvious in in, when you're looking at it but of course people who are new you know may not be able to tell the difference right and so you got to be able to do your research you have to do your research yeah i think I mean, right. You hit on a couple of things here, right? The uh, people that are new are probably not going to know who the authorities are in the field. And this is really where social media is a skill, right? Like as soon as you get into a field, you need to be tied into the community so that you can figure out things like this. Um, and then the second point is I don't think these people are ever the same person. The person who's like the, you know, a uh, an authority in the community and the person who's always talking about the six figures they make and <laughs> driving in my Bentley, right? They're not the same person. Right. So they'll never be the same person. So there, there's a big difference there. Yeah. But that it's almost like the I don't know. It's like, it's almost like people with the mentality, like of like toxic people in the weightlifting community, like made their way over to tech or something like that. Like, it's like, hey, I have this, I, you know, you don't have it because you don't fucking want it enough. Like you're 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 not built like me, you know, oh, like that. you need to change. You need to wake up at 5 a.m. every day and do all, like it's like weird, man. I don't know how it like came. It's like this like bully mentality. You know what I mean? Like like you're like you're selling yourself short, like you're you know, you're being a pussy or something like that. It's really it's really strange. That's a sales tactic, and I forget which one it is. Um, to basically, because what the what you're trying to do basically is get that person to prove to you, be like, "Oh, I'm not like that. I'm serious, right?" And so they'll actually like lay the money down. Like, there's a that's an actual sales right. tactic, and I it has a name, and I can't remember that off the top of my head, but it's it's like a well known thing right it's it's like negging yeah. right like it's like the negging thing with pickup artists right they they oh yeah the women you know you neg them and then they'll want to prove themselves to you or whatever it is like it's like that but with with you know tech or bodybuilding or whatever right. yeah that's a good point yeah but it, it totally happens though you're absolutely right like that's that's a, one of the many tactics that they use that and uh you know like i said the one you see you always see nothing but social media from these people about how people who took their course are making you know thousand six right. figures right that's all you see from them right you don't see and and when you go to look for these people they don't either don't exist or like you just can't for whatever reason get in touch with them it's never you can't go validate it yourself it's never that easy yeah and just like based on that point you just made like the it's, it's not a requirement by any means but if if someone is not engaging in the community uh, in the tech community, like I, I, I don't want to sit here and say that everyone needs to be on social media. Everyone needs to be, you know, tweeting every day, talking to people, and things like that. Um, but if they are, like, like we said, purposefully like obfuscating what what their training is like or something like that, um, and just saying like, you know, people that listen to me, you know, make this salary, drive these cars, you know, they have this job or whatever. Um, but you know, you don't see them like engaging in any way. Like you said, they kind of come out of nowhere and, and are all of a sudden like, yeah, you should trust me. I've been doing this a little while. Um, you know, once in a while that probably is correct, but it's just like, it's weird to be 
it's weird to come in and think that you should be uh, established this level of trust. Um, yet you don't like conversate with the people that do the same thing on a regular basis. So I feel like that is a little bit of a, of a red flag. If you've, if you've never really heard anything or seen anything from them prior to that. Um, and even while they're being a, you know, a, a trainer, or a, you know, a mentor or something like that, if you still don't see content from them, then that's, that's also quite strange. Yeah. And it's funny because, because the people you're talking about, right. If you're a lot of the people doing these videos or stuff like this, they're in your face and they're right. Like you said, like the bodybuilder thing, they're talking to you, like you need to man up and do this and do that. And it's like, those people are obviously outgoing. So you would think that those people would be engaged in the community, right? Like you said, social media is not for everyone, but those are the people that you would expect if they were like that would be really have all these other contacts in the community and would be talking to everyone. Right. The trust thing. And I, I know we're running out of time, but, and we could probably go another hour just on trust alone, but the trust thing is really important, right? Like, um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these scammers trade very heavily on the trust that, you know, is kind of either implicit or intrinsic or, or whatever, uh, with these communities like, you know, the military or, uh, you know, other underrepresented groups, whatever that is, right. That there's a lot of heavy trading on, you can trust me because I am X. The, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to make this go too long. Right. But the military one really, really pisses me off because <laughs> I was in the military 13 years. Right. And so I know what happens when you get out and transitioning into the civilian world. And it's, you know, it's so funny because the military does such a great job of like boosting you up. Right. And teaching you how to like do things for yourself. Uh, but when you get out of the military, all you hear is, are you sure you're going to be able to make it right? All right. It's going to be really hard for you to get a job outside of the military. Like there's a lot of negativity about getting out of the military. And now like mainly for people in the military, not the military itself, um, because the military itself has programs. Um, I, I forget what it's called. I think it's like uh, taps, like transition assistance, something, some, some program that's yeah, like, that. as you get out, it's meant to help you like transition and find a job. And like, they help you, you know, build out your resume and get interview skills and all this stuff. And yeah, feel free to jump in anytime guys. Cause I'm just going to rant for a bit, but yeah. Um, you know, you get out and everything's so uncertain. And uh, a lot of these scam companies, they'll put something on their website that's like, oh, this is from prior U.S. military, U.S. Navy, U.S. Marines, right? And playing on that trust piece, like you said. And it's it's so aggravating, man, because these people that are already like vulnerable and being told, Oh, are you sure you're going to be able to make it on your own? Right. And it's a lot, a lot of people that joined the military did it when they were 18, 19, 20, right. Really young. So they get out and it's their first foray into like real adulthood, if you will. And, uh, you know, so they're just vulnerable. And then you see this on here and you're like, Oh, well, this is right. My brother in arms. It's catered to me. Uh, so they must be trustworthy. Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah, and they know what they know what I need because they were in the military too, and and all of that, right? Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's actually the most disheartening thing about when you when something comes to light that you find out like uh, someone or some organization that did kind of establish that level of trust based on you know a, a minority group of any kind, you know whatever it is, uh, an underrepresented uh, underrepresented uh, community is that. You just want to be like, bro, like you went through this, you know how hard it was. Why are you, why are you going, turning around and like praying on, you know, your, you know, your, your, your kin, your, your brothers in arms. Right. That's, that's the biggest piece. Like even just like as networking as a whole, you know, people that, you know, establish this level of trust. Like I've been doing this for 15 years. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an expert, you know, I, I drive this car, I have this salary, blah, blah, blah. And then to know that you turn around and offer these false promises to people. It's like, that's fucked up. Like there's no other way to put it. It's just fucked up. Yeah. No, it yeah. totally is a hundred percent. Yeah. And it's like you said, killing that trust, man, it's so disheartening because it's, I mean, <laughs> I think all three of us, like we started at a help desk, moved our way up, right? Like that's how we expect 
to see people like being told to give advice. So when someone comes in and, Oh, 90 days, you can make six figures. Shut up. Like just, you know why it's so, it's so annoying, man. And some people say that's gatekeeping, but I like, here's the thing is like gatekeeping is, is arbitrary. And, and, and I know, again, this is for the people, people who haven't gone through the process will probably see certain things as arbitrary and therefore as gatekeeping. And, and again, we're, we're almost out of time here, so we could start a whole other thing here and I don't want to, we'll, we'll save that for a future episode, but, um, it's not gatekeeping to, I think, be realistic, right? It's, it's, it's like the opposite. It's almost like the opposite of gatekeeping, right? Cause, cause you, you know, for someone who's going to believe that in 90 days I could be making six figures uh, because one person, you know, for whatever reason, stumbled, tripped over a rock somehow and managed to, to make it happen, at least for, for some period of time. You know, that's going to be me. That's the unrealistic part. And that's really the part that's, you know, it's not realistic. Right. It's like saying, uh, you know, if you take your shovel out back and dig deep enough, you're going to end up with a pot of gold or something. Right. Like, I mean, it's if one guy does it in his backyard, does it does there should everybody run back out, out back with their shovels? Probably not. Right. And it's probably not. I don't think it's gatekeeping to say, yeah, you probably shouldn't run out back with your shovel. And that's probably no, no pot of gold in your in your backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Not even not even trying to gatekeep. Right. It's just that. Right. I, I wish people could. That'd be awesome if you could just come in and in 90 days you could go and do it. I just I'm not even saying you have to do it this way. I'm just saying it's not realistic. And like right. you said, it's just you have to be realistic with what people that have gone through this have gone through. I'm not saying you have to go through it. Just that that's the expectation that you should have. Yeah, yeah you don't have to do it the way I did it. But I can guarantee you that, you know, unless you're bringing in some magic wand type of ability or something, whatever, your child prodigy or Mozart, whatever it is from the outside, it's just not realistic in any way. Yeah, I think I think that's especially with this career field, I feel like it's more important as a mentor um, to, to point out the things that people shouldn't do rather than what they should do. And if you're if you're honing on what they should do, what they should earn, you know what what steps they have to take uh, to get an outcome, then I think that's I think that's you know like no, uh, not everyone's going to follow your path. Not everyone has to follow your path. Um, more so, tell them you know don't lock yourself into a certain maybe a technology sector. You know maybe be a little bit more fluid, be willing to adapt, things like that. I feel like that's much better advice and and uh, um, kind of gui guidance to give to people. Yeah, agreed for sure. Well, yeah, like Tim said, we don't, we're not going to keep dragging this out because uh, we could go on forever. So I think this is probably a good point to wrap it up. And I'll let Tim or Chris, you guys have any quick last points you want to chime up before we, we uh, end the episode? Uh, if it seems too good to be true, it is. I mean, follow your gut, right? Uh, I think that's the, the main thing I would say. And, and uh, I'll leave it there. <laughs> My closing point is Alex said certs are worthless, so make sure you tweet at him and let him know how you feel about that. <laughs> hey man, I'm the I'm the only one of us three that doesn't have a CCIE, so I can't even I can't even speak to it. <laughs> That's true. Maybe hey man, if hey, if you wanna you That's... should go for it. Yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, just... right. On weekends, um, you know. Actually like actually I know a, a guy. You in, put in uh, ten hours a day. Yeah, three <laughs> No, I just put in the CCIE. time, right? All right. I know guys. a guy I'll hook you up. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you all very much for tuning into the Cables of Clouds podcast. Uh, if you like this episode, please share it around to anyone you think might be interested. Give us a five star rating on your favorite podcatcher. Hit those like and subscribe buttons on our YouTube channel. And we will see you guys next time. Hi, everyone. It's Chris, and this has been the Cables to Clouds podcast. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe to us in your favorite podcatcher, as well as subscribe and turn on notifications for our YouTube channel to be notified of all our new episodes. Follow us on socials at Cables to Clouds. You can also visit our website for all of the show notes at CablesToClouds.com. Thanks again for listening, and see you next time.